Thank you. You don't really have any Speedos, do you? I do. Oh. <laughs> they won't let me have them back. They froze in the Speedo. Why. They took them away from me, and, and my daughter did. She goes, Dad, you know. <laughs> Paul, my buddy Paul, we talk together on the internet all the time on my Facebook page. And uh, he requested that I do a song, and I'm more than happy to do this, and I, won't, I do want to tell you a little story about it. I'll make it brief as, as I can. We're playing in Hilton Head Island, South Carolina, and there was this guy and his, and his wife in the audience, and they came in on Monday, Tuesday night. We started on Monday, they showed up on Tuesday and stayed all week long. Every night they would come back and get the... Just put that anywhere. There's rum in the house too. Whoa. So... Everyone's okay. It's okay. So on the Friday night, he comes up to the stage at like... 2.10 and we had just quit playing and I was tired and we were packing up our stuff for the night and he goes I would really like it if you would come back to the boat with us and have a drink and I said Jim I'm not going to do that because I'm tired and it's 2 o'clock in the morning and I've seen that act if I get started it's not good and he goes brand new bottle of Patron on Yeho and I said Okay, one. So, pack up my stuff, and I've got two guitars, one in each hand, and we go walking down the dock, and I'm thinking, okay, he and his wife, they're in a 36-foot Catalina, little nice sailboat, we'll sit in the, we'll sit in the cockpit, I'll have one drink, and then we'll, I'll split. So, moon's full, wind's blowing, and you could hear, you could hear the halyards clanking on all the, the aluminum masts through the harbor, and, and it's one of my favorite sounds in the world. And we walk down the dock and past all the sailboats. And I'm like, mm, okay. And he keeps going and the dock turns and goes down that way. And, but there's no, there are no boats along this side of the dock except for this ship that's down on the end. And it's down on the end for a reason. It's because it's, it's so big it can't get into the other parts of the, of the marina there. I'm thinking to myself, really? So sure enough, he goes down and goes up the, the gangway and unlocks the door of the wheelhouse. And I stood there just stunned because this boat was 100, 110 <coughs> feet, 112 feet, huge. And he said, I, I, I said, permission to come aboard. And he goes, Granted, and I walked up the gangway and walked into the wheelhouse, and it was teak, everything. And, and you could smell, this, like the new car smell, this was new yacht smell. <laughs> <coughs> and I'm figuring, I didn't ask, but this boat had to be 2 million, maybe 2.5. And the lounge in the back of the boat was as big as this room. And we walk into there, and I set my guitars down, and I'm thinking, Ooh, man, you're in hot cotton now, Hugo. And he pulls out this bottle of tequila, and we sat down and started drinking and talking and talking and talking and drinking and talking. And uh, I look at my watch, and it's 5.30 in the morning now, and I've got to walk a mile or so carrying two guitars, and I'm not fond of that idea, and, and there's no cab but after 2 in the morning. So... I said, Jim, I got to go, and I grabbed my stuff, and, and he got up and walked behind me, and I went into the wheelhouse and started for the hatch, and just as I was about to step out, he grabbed me by the back of the shirt and yanked me back in and, and almost lost my balance. It, it, it made me angry. <laughs> that was a, 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 a male Tillis moment. <laughs> so, I, and, and I turned on him, and I said, Jim, don't do that. And he said, but wait. I want you to have something. And he turned around, and this beautiful, brand new yacht has a silver ship's bell attached to the teak wall, and he took the butt of his hand, and he just goes, bam, and knocks it off, and it fell on the floor, and the bolt, the, the screws went everywhere, and the, 
the thing that held it clattered to the floor, and I am just so stunned, I'm speechless. And he picks the bell up and he goes, here, I want you to have this. And I said, hell no, I ain't taking that. I, was, I know how this story plays out. The police show up at my doorstep at three, at, you know, seven o'clock in the morning. I've been asleep an hour. I ain't taking that bell. He goes, no, I really want you to have it. And he got down on his hands and knees and picked up all the screws and, and, and the, the thing, that, the bracket that held together and insisted that I take it. And to shut him up, because it was going to be a 20-minute conversation about how I'm going to take it. And I thought, well, I'll just come back in the morning and return it before he gets completely sober. And he'll never remember it. <laughs> so I've got the bell in one hand, two guitars. I'm walking back through the harbor. The halyards are clanking. The, every time I take a step, the bell goes ding, ding. Ding, ding. ding, ding. By the time I got back to the band house thanks for asking me this lights by the ocean lights on the water notes in a bottle Somewhere at sea, some breezes whisper through the stays and the haggard. Times long forgotten still whisper to me. This guy, sailor, ground on the lee shore, lends a mirror to might bring. He's quick with the story for the few who listen. He counts off the hours that a ship's bell should be. Ring the bells, ring them loud like we did in the old days. Let the sound of Swept away clean like a change in the tide Ports I've called on, some I remember The night brings the rowdies and bubbles of rum And love for the ladies and their sweet smell and Slap in the brig when the shore patrol comes. Ring the bells, ring them loud like we did in the old days. Let the sound of the bells mark a change in these times. Ring the bells, we can sail down. The horses forgotten, swept away.